three very big key topics to cover this week for uranium and uranium stocks. We're going to talk about the New York Stock Exchange listing for Sprout Physical Uranium Trust and what this means for the entire sector. I'm gonna show you some alarming numbers with that and it's going to be really pump you up hopefully. Kazakhstan civil unrest, we have some big updates for that. Bloomberg still thinks that the uranium supply disruption could happen because this is more of a political issue. ETF rebalance is coming. I called this last year in the beginning of January and we saw a bunch of stocks that I bought run up a few hundred percent. We'll talk about those specific ones and what this means when these ETFs buy up new uranium stocks, especially small cap uranium stocks. We'll look at a couple and we'll talk about it and hit the like and subscribe button below. We're gonna jump right into this. So in Kazakhstan, the civil unrest, things have calmed down a bit, but Bloomberg seems to still think that the overall uranium production from Kazakhstan could still be disrupted, especially the perception. And this is because this is more of a political issue they see and I 100% agree this is what I was saying that you know this country for the most part has been somewhat stable especially with the uranium supply production and all of this but what they are trying to say in this article here is that the government itself is really the main problem and this is what the people have been saying now they are the number one uranium producer in the world where they are lacking is their government the stability in the, the actual government and the trust from the people which is very important and they said the crushing of the protests in recent days is a tragedy for a population with legitimate grievances against an authoritarian government they've lived under since the fall of the soviet union so they said in this article so if you're worried about uranium production today you know a disruption you'll you'll sleep good at night but counting on suppression to guarantee your supply of minerals is a risky game. Even the most cynical miner recognizes that authoritarianism has a nasty habit of leaving anarchy in its wake when things ultimately fall apart. So Kazakhstan, the real problem there is the average person, the average citizen makes only about $3,600 per year. So there's definitely poverty there. And the, the price of electricity has gone up drastically just in the past couple months and then you have nine almost nine percent inflation so this is really hurting people and this is really why people are coming out and they're very mad with the government now in 2015 to 2016 russia was going through a recession and low income households during that time were really hit hard because inflation went to about 16 percent and particularly vulnerable to the increasing prices uh, declining real wages and dampened employment opportunities, progress in poverty reduction has stalled, and the national poverty headcount rate measured only $5 per day in purchasing power, remaining at the estimates of about 14% during 2014 and 2015. So the you know people there are were definitely hurting back then, and things are starting all over again with, with that pain. We're seeing like close to 9% inflation all over again here, 8.4% inflation rate. And this is only growing here, 8.4%. So this is some alarming data that's really coming out. And if you just Google it, you can see uh, there's a lot of videos it's crazy the poverty that is still there and this is one of the richest uranium obviously number one in the world they bring in a lot of money these companies and it's government owned it's you know 75 percent owned by you know the government state owned and it's really sad because they basically pay these people hardly anything now one thing that recently happened that could help push uranium prices up is kazakhstan's president has said that mining companies must pay higher taxes we're still going to see this later on down the road people today are saying oh yeah you know it's not going to disrupt anything nothing to see here but they're totally wrong it's you know the people are being suppressed there their voices are not being heard yet and they're tired of it if we see inflation go up in the u.s more in this coming year inflation around the world's likely to go up double triple in other countries and if that's going to happen people are going to you know revolt again and you're probably going to see a lot more people walk off and this is uh instability you know obviously if I'm a producer, I'm going to probably want to secure long-term contracts sooner, get this pounds, to get these pounds of uranium as fast as I can, because it's very viable that you get this because it takes a long time to to produce, you know, U308. And uh, the thing is, is we have not seen the utilities come back to the market yet. You got to keep this on your radar because at any moment things could turn you know sour really quick 
We don't know if the Russian troops are going to be leaving. They're supposedly going to be leaving in the next couple of days. But, you know, if anything happens, they're probably going to stay there for a while. Now, even if they leave, it does not mean that this is not going to start up again. In fact, it might mean that they would start something up again, especially if, you know, these aren't just peaceful protesters. If this is an organized thing, then it's it's very it's going to be a really bad outlook for uranium production, which is already has a bad outlook from Kazan and Prom themselves before any of this happens. Happen. What I think is actually going to be the biggest, you know, catalyst in a sense for Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, and we've talked about this before, is the New York Stock Exchange listing. Now, a lot of people are wondering with the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust New York Stock Exchange listing, like why has the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust not ran like it was doing in September? And I literally have a chart here super simple to understand. This is the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust, SRUF, the OTC ticker. Now you can start to see the amount of volume that we were having in September when the uranium price started to run, uranium stocks ran to, you know, six, seven, eight year highs during this time. And it really was because of the amount of money that Sprott was able to raise overall because of having this OTC ticker. During this time, all the brokers pretty much in the US and, and all over around the world as well, were, there was a new rule for the OTC changing. And on September 28th, 2021, what they did was they were going to stop displaying submitting of quotes for securities of issuers that have not met public reporting requirements. So the thing was, was these stocks got moved from where they were trading to the OTC gray or the OTC pinks, which means you couldn't trade them. And, you know, after this and they could only let you sell them. So only selling pressure. So this was really to help clean up the OTC, which was a good thing. But here's the thing. The Sprout Physical Uranium Trust did report. They're listed on another stock exchange. Obviously, they're in Canada. And the fact that they were listed in Canada should have made them exempt. But this really started to kill the run. And you can see this in here. Nobody could buy. You could see it. Nobody could buy and they can only sell. So it really killed the run. You can see the selling pressure after the 28th. It was like 200, you know, 250 K. 269k and we saw it you know trade sideways and we really this this volume was more than the parent ticker in canada okay you know 3.16 million at its peak meaning they were able to raise a lot of money so when this new york stock exchange listing for sput comes and they're able to raise even more, raise the limits to multiple billions of dollars, and they're able to raise, you know, because the liquidity will be way better. If they're able to do this on a daily basis, three plus million in buyback uranium, we're gonna see a massive run. And this is huge. And that's why I think everyone understands that this is probably going to be one of the biggest catalysts of the year when that happens. Now, Sprott Physical Uranium Trust did say that the trust is contractually obligated to make an application for a U.S. listing. Now, I, know I see a lot of people out there saying, oh, they're not going to do it or, you know, they're fine with the Canadian one. Well, they've got an obligation to do it and they are going to do it. And, you know, as a trust, what they're doing with this uranium is they're keeping it. They're not going to be flooding the market back with it. So this is huge for the price of uranium. Now, Sprott has a strong track record of listing physical commodity investment vehicles, these ETFs in the U.S., and they've committed the funding up to $1.5 million in costs associated with seeking a U.S. listing, which may help increase the diversity and size of shareholder base, improve liquidity, and support future uranium purchases. Now, they're really downplaying this because what this really means is they're going to be buying up more uranium likely than two times the overall uranium needed for all of the producers in America for utilities. So if they can get on the New York Stock Exchange, that's probably what they're going to do. They've already got 42 million pounds of U308, which is over, I believe, a year's worth of fuel for all of the reactors, 93. I think this is going to happen likely at the end of Q2 this year. I think that spot uranium prices should be over $55 easily by that time. And I think we're going to start to continually see inflation numbers go up. But with inflation numbers going up, I see that Kazadam Prom are not only going to have to pay more taxes, but people are going to demand more money, you know, just to get by. And a lot of companies 
companies out there that, that aren't as wealthy as Kazadam Prom are probably not going to be able to do that. And there's going to probably be an uprising. And I think oil prices also will start to go back up. So the ETFs, something that happened last year was very exciting. We saw a lot of ETFs, the uranium ETFs specifically add some new companies. And this was back in January. And these were some of the companies that were replaced into the ETF, one of them specifically here, uh, URA. And a lot of these companies, you know, I owned a bunch of these and I saw a lot of gains after that. But one particularly, not in this ETF, but if you look, this was me posting about March of 2021 last year. And uh, so one, one stock that I covered was Western Uranium around 70 cents. I bought a bunch of shares and it was actually added around March. Uh, in fact, I say here that 900% of the volume uh, in Western Uranium was this ETF that month. They were buying up a bunch and they were selling a bunch of shares as well from other, you know, rebalancing. Now we have that coming up right now. These bigger ETFs, they're a lot bigger now. A lot of people are talking about Sparrow Physical Uranium Trust. It's only gonna be a couple million pounds, you know, with the amount that they actually might buy up. What is big is looking and seeing which stocks they might add that are not added already with very low market caps, because that's where it's at. Just enough to get them into the ETF. We've we've covered a couple in the last you know few videos of mine, and there is a possibility those could be added. Forum Energy Metals was one of them. We'll see where that goes, but they would be phenomenal. I think it, because it has such a low float market cap, if it makes the cut, then we could see a good run with their drilling process going on in the next month, which will be, you know, February. They've already got, you know, five permits submitted. So we see that happen. We could see stocks like that. And there's, you know, there's many others that could be added just to give you kind of a baseline of where things could go. The same thing happened with Western Uranium. We bought it 70 cents. They added, started adding it to the ETF about, you know, a little before March, I believe. And we saw that run about $3 and 15 cents. Now the same thing on the flip side can happen. They can sell these as well as you saw in that rebalance there and it can drop the price pretty big uranium stocks today we saw you know a somewhat near the end of the day they started to turn green because fed was talking about inflation and they said they basically reassured everyone that they would eventually raise rates and that everything was fine for now so obviously we know that prices are going to go up and this tells me 100 percent that we're probably not seen the last of the uprising in Kazakhstan. Unfortunately for the people there, I really do hope that the government can help them out because the the little amount that they're paying the average citizen there is, is very sad. Uranium stocks right now, this is updated for Australia. We've seen a uh, half, about half of them are green. You know, uh, some of the bigger ones, you know, Paladin and Deep Yellow, they're still green. Then you got some of the big, big ones that are owned by a lot of the ETFs. They're starting to turn red. Now we saw the overall US market today was very green, especially towards the end of the day. And if you see here, it was all energy stocks, energy related stocks. They were up big today. They really led the market. Now tech, you know, when you see Apple and Amazon and these companies, you know, when they're green and they're up a couple percent, you know, the market outlook is going to be positive probably for the next couple days a week. Uh, so I think Uranium stocks near the end of the day, they started to, you know, started to go green as we saw earlier, you know, the uranium stocks right now, until this price of uranium, in my opinion, breaks above $55, maybe even 60, we're probably going to see uranium stocks trade with the overall market. Now, I think they're more leveraged on the market. So if the market's green, you know, a percent or two, uranium stocks are probably gonna be up 10%. But if the, if the market's down 2%, uranium stocks are probably gonna be down, you know, six to eight to maybe even 10, 12%, depending on the uranium stocks. So they're very volatile, but I do like the fact that the outlook for uranium is just so positive. So we do not know yet if Sprout Physical Uranium Trust will be bought up by the ETFs yet, but we're where my radar is at is with the small uranium stocks that have permits that are drilling and that are just above the market cap to be added to the ETFs. This is where I'm gonna be watching.